pleasure of now introducing Dr. Vagesh Ayer uh, from promoting the things that we have done in terms of patients that we saw in the COVID era, non-COVID era, how many people in teleconsult, how many people otherwise. Now we go to carbohydrate counting and carbohydrate counting is something which is uh, considered relevant by Americans, irrelevant by some people. And, and what is its relevance in the current scenario of CGMS? He's going to tell that. I'm reminded of a very old story that when statistics came into medicine, they said that you are ruining this system. And now we are talking about p-values, the timing ranges, the, the, the confidence intervals, the point estimates, and we are talking about statistics each time we, we talk. So I think we've come a long way from the initial doubt, doubting days to, to the present days, but he's going to talk about covered kind counting, its relevance, because carbohydrates have among the trinity of macronutrients, protein, fats, and carbohydrates taken the maximum beating in the past few years. Previously, we used to blame fats, then protein, protein issue was uh, settled by uh, Dr. Das and the nephrologist saying that we hardly eat any protein, we have to supplement protein, which does not have phosphate. But now he's going to talk in defense or the status of carbohydrate counting. Over to Vagesh. Vagesh is, is, is in the St. John's Medical College uh, and he is the uh, uh, ex-head uh, of the department, professor. He is a very, very learned man and I have uh, pleasure in introducing people like him because uh, it is indeed a honor to be served with him. He has been a stalwart in the clinical trials. He's got 80 plus clinical trials and has many publications. Over to you, Vagesh, for this. Yeah. Uh, good afternoon, sir. It's a pleasure to be associated with Dr. A.K. Das, Dr. Bipin Sethi, most senior, most learned people in our field in whole of India. I think car counting has been well mentioned by you earlier. It is mainly focused in the west but when it came to the india it was always a confusion because when my patient came from a different places and a different servings they used to ask me which carb count and how much to call how much carb count and how much insulin to give really we found it difficult one of my friend came from abroad and told i have learned all about carb counting and i am going to make a great difference in uh, diabetes management in our uh, country but after three months i met him he told, oh, it's very difficult to practice in India because none of the food comes with the label of a carb count when it comes to eating in India. But I think this ADA has gone through a very good uh, session on carb counting. I think to start with, Becky Selick uh, spoke on why is, what is the importance of a carb counting. And there's definitely, especially in the type 1 patients, if you know the carb counting of the uh, food you are taking, you can adjust your insulin level based on the pre-meal levels and it will help to reduce the HbA1c and also the most important thing when it comes to the uh, carb counting is it will involve the patient in its management which is very much true when it comes to the type 1 diabetes. But what has happened is carb is alone is not needed for the uh, glycemic control. Even the proteins and the fats accommodate to the uh, glycemic control and we are mainly we are concentrating on the glucose or carbs. This is the time where we have to move away from carb or a glucocentric to a uh, protein and a uh, lipocentric view. I think this has been very well highlighted by Becky Selick and also there was a Kirsten Bell's uh, uh, talk on this carbohydrate scenting favoring in protein, fat, fiber, glycemic index and more to de determine the tech bolus insulin dosing. That is the effect of carb is most immediate following a food intake. But when it comes to the protein and the fat, they have an impact on the delay in, delayed in increase in the glucose level. In fact, there are evidence to say that about four to five hours postprandial, you continue to have a higher glucose level if somebody is, is taking a fat or a protein. That is the impact of a glycemic management of a protein and a fat when it comes to the uh, diabetes impact. That's why including even a protein and a fat is the most important when you give a correction uh, to the boluses in a patients with type 1 diabetes. In type 2 diabetes, the management is entirely different because they do have some amount of endogenous insulin secretion with the protein and with the protein, especially the amount of uh, insulin uh, released is little more than the glucose what we see in patients with type 2 diabetes. That's why this confusion doesn't come. In a type 1 diabetes where they are endogenous insulinopenic, there is no insulin secretion from their body when they entirely depend on the exogenous insulin 
carb counting even including a protein and a fat becomes a, the uh, important in the management of glucose not even these things even the among the carb what is the high glycemic index low glycemic index amount of the fiber included in the diet makes lots of impact on the glycemic control it has been very well for, found that this was in the bell's paper uh, presentation it was found that high fiber and a low gi results in the lower glucose level and a lower glucose uh, response in patients with type 2 diabetes that's why i think she ended up saying that christina bell uh, high fiber and a low gi meals result in the lower blood glucose response that's why i think we should recommend all our patients though we are telling that to have a higher uh, fiber in their diet definitely this gets proven by the uh, these papers but most important the step what we have learned uh, in the recent years and also lots of papers which have suggested one of the paper from dr holy willis suggested the glucose is only a small piece or a carb count is only a small piece of the meal but with the cgm availability we'll be knowing that every individual's meal response is different from what we just saying earlier means cgms has added a greater dimensions to the management of uh, glycemic management wherein we know that the particular individual his meal pattern will be knowing by a cgms following a which meal intake how much it is going to go up gets known and accordingly we can individualize and we can personalize the management earlier we were doing what is known as a diabetes tunnel vision we were only a glucocentric and a carb counting beyond that we were not knowing if this were the true i think americans and the caucasians wouldn't have developed a diabetes because majority of their diet is a fat and a protein carb count is very carb is very less but with this concept of coming even a fat and a protein adding to the uh, gl glycemic uh, excursion i think the uh, vision broadens and we have to individualize the uh, from the tunnel vision we are going to a wider vision wherein even a protein and a fat is taken into and accordingly we can adjust that's why the cgm will help in a greater dimension to adjust the dietary uh, things in patients with type 2 diabetes that's why i think she ended holly willis ended telling that use of cgm data real time following a diet and also a, a artificial intelligence will play an important role in the management of type 2 diabetes then comes the most important with the automated correction things correct closed loop uh, system they have found that almost reduction in the hba1c happens to the close uh, to the tune of 7.5 percent so even a smartphone enabled these devices helps to reduce the hba1c less than 7.5 percent this emerging technologies have suggested that not only this uh, carb counting even other macronutrients have a impact on the blood glucose if somebody takes other than the just sugary drinks and other things yes their glucose non sugary drinks and other things the sugars will be coming under a control but they won't be having a right food it is important to have a important to have a holistic food so that we can achieve a good glycemic control and we can give a good balanced life to the patient and he ends up telling there is nothing known as a best diet i think over the years we have also really realized in the clinical practice there is no single best diet for a patients with type 2 diabetes we have seen patients with a similar diet differing in their blood glucose uh, levels when they eat the same amount of a food their responses are entirely different this is true even with type 1 and type 2 i think that's been even now echoed in the western culture also that's why car counting becomes very very important we should think beyond the uh, car counting even the portion of the food the amount of a protein is there what is the amount of fiber is there what is the amount of fat is there overall these things will help to reduce the hba1c to the desired level of less than 7.5 percent and also it has been found that the size of the meal or a portion of the meal makes it lots of error even in the best clinical trials they have they have told that 20 percent of the error in counting the carbs 20 percent error so this error becomes much more bigger if the size of the meal is on the higher side and you will get a higher uh, errors so this is the uh, 
uh, one thing we need to consider have a smaller and a frequent the errors is minimized even the fluctuations will be on the lesser side so i think overall the most impact and the most important thing about all the papers which have come in this uh, 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 ADA 2021 is technological use of a CGMS, know the individual pattern of the glycemia in every patient. CARB is important, but we have to move away from the CARB or a glucose centric to a protein, fat, even a low GI and also a high fiber diet, which has got an influence in reducing glucose and also improving overall, overall uh, HP1C of the patient. And one more thing they have told that even a missing meal, corrections, all those things needs to be corrected with the CGMS so that we can reduce the HP1C to a much more greater uh, meaning and we can prevent the long term complications. Yeah, over to Dr. Bipin Sethi.